We're here again with Retired Time Productions. I'm Dave. And I'm John. And we're going to talk about this quadcopter project. We've ordered a bunch of parts here, and uh, we're trying to build us a, a little dead cat quadcopter. It's actually a, an alien frame from uh, newer. We got it off Amazon.com. It was on sale for like, I think it was like 20 bucks or something. So we got a good deal on it. And uh, John has put the frame together and put the motors on and the ESCs, right? And the distribution board. Okay, so here we go. What should we talk about first, John? Well, let's see. Let's talk about... We already talked about the frames. Yeah, okay. So we did the frame. So let's talk about this. What is this? It's the NASA M Light. The DJI. Yeah. NASA M Light. We'll just hold the box up there. Okay. It has the NASA M Light module and it's got a GPS module in here. Way down in the bottom. There is the GPS. And there is what's called the LED or the power monitor module. I know I can't uh, show it to you very good because it's in a bag. But we'll get it out later and another video and show you how it goes together and whatnot. This is not really a new product. The DJI NAS M Light has been around for a while and it's been proven to work well. There are other versions that are more robust but for the money this one's pretty good. Okay so we have that. Next down is the Minim OSD. We've got a Minim OSD in here and a microphone. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook this microphone up to our uh, video transmitter. Yeah. And so it's going to broadcast audio and video. And uh, then the Minim OSD, we're going to do a modification or a mod. So we're going to hook that onto the DJI NASA. I think that's another video or another couple of videos just how to do that and program that. But we're going to have an OSD with this project. Okay, now what about this thing? Well, this is a, uh, it's a, uh, what was it again? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll hold it up there and you can talk about it. Hold the label side. Well, I'll show them the label side first. It's a, uh, what is it again? Well, it's an FTDI. Oh yeah, FTDI USB adapter. We got it from SparkFun. Yeah, and uh, they also call it a breakout board sometimes. I don't know why. I don't see anything you can break out on there. It's called a breakout board, I guess, because it's like all the chips are already soldered on the board. Yeah. And you just need that because of the minimum OSD. If you're going to program the minimum OSD... I mean, OSD, you break it out. Like, you know, you know how be. they say you break something out instead yeah, of maybe, taking something maybe out. Maybe it's like a bad case of poison ivy. I don't know. No. It's not that. No. But so it... It plugs you know, onto this. You know right? how they say you break it out, you know, as a slang term? Yeah. Break it out. Yeah. So that's the way you program your Minim OSD with that little thing. You hook it to your computer on your USB port. So that's why we got that. Okay. Now, the receiver. The receiver is what? It's an orange RX 8 channel with two antennas and two satellite sockets. Yeah, so it's like a dual port for a satellite. It's actually called a twin port. Twin port, yeah. So you can have two satellite receivers hooked to it if you want to. It also has these... And it's spectrum compatible. But it's also dual on the antennas, too. It has two antennas. Yeah, spectrum compatible, 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah. Orange RX supposed to have pretty good range, this particular model, but it does have eight channels, which is what we needed for our uh, radio, which is an eight-channel radio. We'll probably be using the Spectrum DX8. Yeah. And uh, so what's next? The next is the motors. So we have down here their... Is that in the video right there? No. You get down here a little bit. Right there. Okay. So this is 
see if I can get this around here where people can see it. Alright, there. Hope the label's facing forward, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, this is a sunny sky. It's supposed to have really good bearings, uh, Japanese bearings, and uh, it's a 2212 980 KVM motor. And we got it from uh, BuddyRC.com. Got four of them, actually, since it's a quadcopter. Now, I'm not saying you should buy this stuff because I don't know if any of it works. You know, <laughs> we're, we're just, we just got this stuff on recommendations and uh, we're putting it together. We're going to test it and see how it all works. So, you know, I'm not pitching this stuff, but uh, this is what we got, what we're going to try to attempt to do. I keep forgetting I'm supposed to look over there. The next thing we got is the ESCs. Now, here they are right here. Yeah, and uh, again from Hobby King. <laughs> Those are Hobby King. I'm going to hold that up there and you can look over there and tell them. So it is 4X Turnkey Multistar 30 Amp Multi Rotor Brushless ESCs 2 to 4S. And they're Opto, which means it doesn't have the BEC in them, which is a good thing for us because we don't have to rewire them or anything. Yeah, well, all these, uh, all these wires here which are going to hook to the DJI controller uh, have, uh, you know, would normally have a 5 volt line coming out <coughs> from the BEC which then you have to take the 5 volts out of three of them and so you only have one so they don't conflict with each other. Well these particular ESCs, the Optos, don't have 5 volts coming out of them so you don't even have to worry about that. The uh, 5 volts is going to be supplied by the power module from the the uh, DJI NASA, which is called the LED, but uh, yeah, so or or a uh, switching BEC if it draws too much. Yeah, or you could use that, definitely. Okay, so next we have a programming card because you got to program all the uh, ESCs so they're the same. So that's the programming card that was recommended again from Hobby King. You can see it there. You just uh change these jumpers and put them in the positions for the options you want to select and then connect the uh, lead from the ESC on there and power it up and it's supposed to program it. Power distribution board. It's actually on here. Yeah, you might have, might have to hold that up. Uh, here, I'll get it up here. So what does the power distribution board do? Well, it's basically what it says. It takes the power from the battery and it uh, distributes it to all the motors. So there is the some of the leads from it right here going to the ESCs. And what was cool about this is the, the motors, the ESCs, and the power distribution board already had the bullet connectors and everything just plugged right up, just plug and play, didn't have to do any soldering. And what we're left with is the an XT60 connector sticking out here to where the power goes in. But all this all this so far was done with no soldering, so that was that was pretty cool. I like that right there. Yeah. Now you notice we've got uh, two of the ESCs up on top and two tie wrapped underneath. Uh, we haven't really decided exactly how we're going to do this, but I noticed uh, to put the battery back here the uh, ESCs were in the way if they were on top and uh, so I moved them underneath because they worked well there. The front ones we don't know yet. We may change that. This is all subject to change. Just out of curiosity, will the battery fit in here all the way back? What I was thinking about doing, again subject to change, is put it on the top. I'm just going to put the battery on the top and hold it down with this uh, tie wrap here, or uh, sorry, Velcro. Just hold it down with that because I thought that would be easier to do it that way. But it could, it might could go in, in the inside depending on the type of battery. I think we're going to be using a four cell, and that brings us to the props right here. We've got, we got these uh, four props here. Two of them are reversing props since this is a quadcopter, and two of them are regular. They're nine by fives and it's uh, recommended to use 9x5s with the 4-cell battery. If you've got a 3-cell battery, you can use the 10x5s, I believe it is. 
And uh, we got these from. Oh, that's what it is. Got Heli RC. Oh, that's what it is. Got Heli. Let's see if I can get that up there. Got Heli. Right in that area. That's where it came from. Kind of a strange looking name until you figure out what it means. But yeah, that's where they came from. And they are a carbon mix prop. And that's what determines the size of the battery. I mean, smaller props, the, mo the motor needs to turn faster, so you got more cells on the battery. So that's four cells for that, right? Yeah. Okay, the next thing, we wanted to get a 400 milliwatt transmitter from uh, ready-made RC. Uh, and ready-made RC transmitters usually have this gold uh, case right here uh, mounted with this mounted inside the gold case and you have to take the case off and all. But anyway, the ready-made RC did not, they were out of stock on the 400 milliwatt 1.3 gigahertz transmitters. So I never did get it from there. What I actually ended up doing was uh, I got, went to another place and it was called Range Video. A lot of you probably heard of Range Video in Florida. And uh, it's 800 milliwatts. And I think it was like $65. It has a really nice uh, wiring harness that I like. I'll, I kind of like it better than the ready-made RC because it's got like a socket here where you can plug a servo cable in or make adapters easily. It's got a JST connector and a place already made for the microphone and it's pretty short and compact and no muss no fuss so I kinda like that comes with a little antenna but I think we're gonna be using some uh, yeah show them those those are the uh, blue beam antenna. blue beams the one I be crazy talks about and uh, they got the little ferrite core on it as a filter so they're filtered on the stem and uh, one antenna is slightly different than the other. They come as a set, but the receiver is different than the transmitter as far as the way they're designed so that they, they're most effective. So we'll use those. Now there was uh, some question on RC groups as to whether you could use 800 milliwatts because they're afraid that that would overdrive the receiver, which is 2.4. So I guess 1280, which is what the frequency we'll be using, may have some harmonics that will you know overdrive this receiver but as long as we keep them far enough apart and plus this has satellite ports if you want to add satellite you know uh, receivers but if you know if we put like one in the front and one way in the rear I can put this one back here somewhere the battery's on top I can mount this here or something but just to keep them apart it should work so that's another thing we'll be testing but uh, you know, the 800 milliwatts doesn't cost much more and uh, has a lot of range. Just happened to be in stock, so that's what I went with. It also has uh, 1258 as well as 1280, in case anyone's wondering. But uh, that brings us to our next thing. We'll be using the 1280 because we got this thing. And this is very interesting. This is something new that's been out, I guess, for a while, but I didn't know about it. A lot of people may not know about this. And that is the Fat Shark compatible 1.3 gigahertz receiver. Now it has a little can that goes over that, but that's another video. Yeah, it has this, uh, I got it actually open here. I got the can, I removed the little cover. Like that. And uh, I didn't do that just to show you the inside. What I wanted to mention really was I want to change this, this little uh, filter right here. It's a ceramic uh, bandpass filter or sometimes trap called filter. a trap filter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this trap filter determines what the, uh, the uh, carrier is for the audio or what carrier, what carrier frequency it's, it's receiving. So the ones over there from uh, Turkey, which is where this came from, Turkey, came from laserbrushlessgimbal.com, I think it is. But um, over there in that country, they use 
uh, 6.5 for the notch on this thing and we need 5.5 otherwise all you hear is this hiss coming in over the audio so I have ordered some of these trap filters or uh, bandpass filters and I'm gonna put them in put one in here and see if I can correct that problem they say you can do it that way in RC groups but the trap filters are hard to find the only place I could really get one was from Australia so it may take me a while to get them but uh, we're gonna try that and prove that but anyway this thing does not have 1258 that's one of the drawbacks with it 1258 is not available with this yet so it has a uh, 1280 and some other frequencies that we can't even use you know that aren't even legal in the United States but so we're going to use uh, the 1280 and so it'll match and I've tested this already and it actually works great all you do is just pop it into your fat sharks and put your antenna on there and you're good to go uh, here's the box for the uh, the sunny sky motors what they look like right there what else we got John of course, camera we, yeah we got the camera over there you want to show him the camera I'm spying on you he's got an eye on you you're, oh wait the lens caps on don't you're on candid camera <laughs> yeah yeah lens caps on it but we already had this this is yeah. from security camera 2000 thanks to them for and there's the uh, menu board yeah yeah they they make some good cameras that are this is the PZ0420 which is commonly used for FPV we've already sprayed it with some plasti dip which you don't have to do but we did just to protect it and so this is the little um, menu board here right yeah so you can program it that doesn't have to be on there when you're flying you can just unplug it but that's what we're going to be using for the camera yep so we got the camera going to the in the microphone video transmitter. Get the microphone. Yeah, and the microphone mentioned earlier plugs on right there. And uh, yeah, it's not too hard to do. Very easy to plug and go with this one. Yep. So what other components did not we mention? Well, one thing we don't have is we need a. 12 volt regulator since we're using four cell we need a 12 volt regulator for for the camera equipment and the transmitter so uh, that's something we might get to later well the other way we could go is of course just use a separate battery yeah that's the other way too could just use a separate 12 volt battery now yeah a battery like this which is a 750 I've tried this on the bench and it runs over an hour it'll run the transmitter and the camera for over an hour so that's a lot longer than the quadcopter is ever going to fly I know yeah. some people might boast they get up to 15 minutes on a quadcopter but no one's getting an hour so so that that would probably work just fine or even a smaller one even yeah smaller even a smaller one could work so we'll be getting into some other videos we're going to get into uh, modifying the minimum OSD and hooking it to the DJI yeah uh, obviously we're not going to do a total build video because uh, hey, we're already into building it but I think most people can figure out how to put a frame together yeah and just get the parts and look at the picture and screw them together it didn't come with a manual so we had to actually study a picture and see how it all fits together but we got we got it down eventually yeah that was kind of strange it didn't come for, with an assembly diagram just a picture mm -hmm. of what it looked like after you got it done yeah I've also got one of these uh, super simple OSDs here that if you didn't want to get too complicated with a minimum OSD and have all those extra features you can use one of these super simple OSDs what which just gives you uh, battery voltages I think you can have two battery voltage and a timer a flight timer it just tells you how long you've been up there and it has like 40 different positions you can put the numbers on the screen by pressing a button right here just keep pressing the button and, until you get a position that you like so that's an option okay so I guess that's about it for now see you on the tube alright see you on the tube